So I want to provide you with an overview with my honest thoughts on the defending Azure Path over on TryHackMe. This is their Azure Path, part of their cloud training license. And the first thing you're going to notice is this is not cheap. This is in addition to a regular TryHackMe license. If you have a regular TryHackMe uh, subscription, the Azure and AWS paths are not included. Now, if you wanna know about the AWS path, I have an entire playlist on my YouTube page where I work through the entire path, video for every single room on that. And I just wanna say thank you to TryHackMe. They gave me permission to do that. I didn't think they would, but when the AWS path released, I said, yo, can I live stream all of it? Fully expecting them to say no. And they're like, yeah, go ahead. So you can find that on my YouTube channel if you wanna get a feel for what their AWS path is like. But I also have access to their Azure path because I am part of the UAT team over on TryHackMe. What that means is I'm a volunteer, but I'm part of a small group of people that when new challenge rooms are submitted, we review the challenge rooms. And my goal is to make sure the rooms that get approved on TryHackMe are realistic. One of the feedback I've been very blunt about to try hack me in the past is that some of the challenge rooms are CTFE. They're nothing like what I see in the real world as a pen tester. So I'm part of that UIT team to review some of those rooms before they get released to the public. But as part of that, one advantage I have is I get access to all of the business stuff on try hack me uh, for free, but not really for free because I'm volunteering my time, but I do have access to the defending Azure path. So in this video, I want to give you an overview of the path and then we're also going to work through a snapshot of one of the challenges so you can see what the path is actually like and how they spin up these Azure environments for us to dig into. So without any further ado, let's just walk through this together. The first thing I do want to be upfront with is the price right here. To get access to their cloud training, it's going to cost $375 USD for three months of access. Now that's definitely a little bit on the steep side. The reasoning for that is just because of what licensing and spinning up cloud environments for all these different people can end up costing. And TryHackMe does, as a business, still need to make a profit from it as well. But let me just be upfront and say, yes, I too recognize that this price is steep and it's something you really have to wrestle with. The other side of it that might be worth pursuing is TryHackMe has business plans. Now, I got a business plan back in the day in a very ghetto way. I don't even know if it's allowed anymore, but I wanted access to the AWS path, which back when it released, it was only available to business plans, but to have a business plan, you needed like five or six seats. So I got like five or six people from Discord. We all chipped in a bunch of money and we purchased a business plan for Hack Smarter and we made the Hack Smarter business so that we could then get access to the AWS path. But if your employer, and or if you have an employer, which many of you probably do, and you work in cybersecurity, it's worth at least having a conversation about getting access to a try hack me business plan because then you will get access to the azure and the aws path and you won't have to pay for it out of your own pocket and it's a little more affordable that way but just want to be upfront. three months of access you are looking at 375 dollars and the reason i want to showcase this path is so you can answer the question yourself hey is this price actually worth it based on what's in the path so let me go ahead and show you this path now here is the defending Azure path. You can see I'm not fully done with it, but I've completed 88% of it, which I think is pretty good. And let's walk through everything that it covers. I'll zoom in so you can see it okay. It says in this path, you'll dive deep into Microsoft Azure security. And that's the big thing I wanna point out to you. This path is very much a blue team path. There is a red team challenge at the end, which feels a little bit out of place, but it's there. And I also want to encourage you to check out Stephen Upshaw, Hopefully I'm saying your name right, my friend. I'm pulling it up on LinkedIn. Yeah, Stephen Upshaw, he's one of the top players on Try Hack Me. He did a very good review about this on LinkedIn. I will drop a link to his LinkedIn review in the description of this video. If for some reason it's not, if for some reason it's not there when you watch this video, it's because I forgot. Let me know in the comment. I'll drop the link there. But he did a very good review from his perspective of someone who worked through it. But it is all about blue team stuff. So if you do Microsoft Azure security, if you do blue team, if you're in a SOC, I think you'll really enjoy this pathway. You'll get hands-on with Microsoft Sentinel and Defender, focusing on threat detection, incident response, vulnerability management, et cetera, et cetera. And it is a mix of both theory and hands-on labs. But here's the cool thing about it. Generally, if you want to learn cloud pen testing, whether it's Azure or AWS or cloud defending, you need to create your own Azure lab environment. Now, with 
that, that can come with some considerable cost if you don't set it up the right way. The beauty of this path on Trihackme is you don't have to spin up anything. They spin up an entire Azure tenant with all the licenses needed for you to get hands on with these pretty cool tools, especially in the blue team side of things. And they're a lot of fun to work with. Let me scroll through and we can go ahead and dive into one of these. I'm going to go ahead and roll in the path. And I'll show you everything that it covers real quick. So it begins by talking about Microsoft Sentinel and just some basics of how it works, how to ingest data. Once again, very basics, not super exciting stuff, but still good things to be aware of. Then we get to the KQL, which uh, Stephen Upshaw, he must be crazy. <laughs> so I apologize, Stephen. He said the KQL was his favorite part of the path. The KQL was my least favorite part of the path. Now, KQL is Custo Query Language. It allows you to do some pretty in-depth queries while you're doing threat hunting or incident response. But here's why I personally didn't like the KQL stuff. It's just like a lot of uh, explaining, here's how you run these queries. It's like a long page of all these different queries. And then at the very end, you run a few of the queries. But... It was just long. It was hard for me to concentrate because it was the same thing for a bunch of different rooms. So for me, it was a grind to work through the KQL rooms. Now, I enjoyed it. I learned stuff, but it was it was also a grind. Now, Steven, on the other hand, said this was his favorite part. So maybe this will be your favorite part as well. But that's my thoughts on that first part. We have Microsoft Defender XDR. You can see this is the path that I haven't done so far, but this one has been quite a bit of fun on the XDR side of things. You're doing a little more with threat hunting type things. The only rooms I have left are these two right here, and then I'll be completely done with the defending Azure path. But we have the lateral movement and execution. And then finally, we have the Azure security challenges. And you can see I completed both of those. This one just seemed out of place. So this is my feedback to try hack me. This Azure, can you GA Azure challenge for cloud pen touches, find the attack path and escalate the global admin on paper. It sounds cool, but for people going through this path, unless I missed it, there's literally nothing in this path that actually teaches you Azure red teaming or Azure pen testing in that way. So that one was just a little bit out of place. I did complete it. I learned something. I learned quite a bit, few things going through it, but I know for a lot of people that might throw them off. The other one though, is this Microsoft Sentinel just looking challenge. And I want to actually showcase a little bit of this challenge. Let's go ahead and open it up. And I'm going to reset my progress in the room. So I don't reveal all of the flags. Let's go ahead and reset our progress. And I'll show you one of the challenges from this room. So first we have to deploy the cloud environment. Now, remember I told you they do all of this for you in their own Azure tenant. So if I click cloud details right here, I can go ahead and click join lab to join the lab. We'll give it a second to spin up the Azure lab environment. All right, there we go. So here is our scenario. You are a SOC analyst or a SIM practitioner, or maybe a cloud security engineer or you're a streamer, right? <laughs> Either one works. What we know is incidents have been firing in Microsoft Sentinel and you are called to the task. Can you handle these incidents? So we need to join the lab, which I just did. We're gonna log into the Azure portal and we're gonna open up the lab and we're gonna dive into this stuff. Now it takes a little bit for everything to launch. Let me go to cloud details again. Do we have to ingest logs? There's, there's a specific uh, way you need to do each one of these. So I need to follow that process. But for the beauty of video editing, I'll speed you guys up to when all the logs are ingested. If you go through this room on your own, you can follow all the steps, but I won't bore you in this detail. We'll get everything spun up and then we'll dive into the incident investigation. All right, we have the incidents loaded into Microsoft Sentinel, and I wanna show you how to investigate incident number two, which is attempts to sign in to disabled accounts. You can imagine if a threat actor finds a breached database, they may do some password spraying with breached accounts. And if we can get an indication that, hey, someone is trying to sign into disabled accounts, that's something for us as the blue team to really dig down into. So let me show you how this challenge works on Try Hack Me. We have a few different questions it's asking. What is the IP involved in the incident? That's always important. Important, although it can be spoofed. What is the IP geolocation of the city? What is the disabled account? And what is the result type filter in the rule? Let's work through just a few of these questions together. I'll jump back over to Microsoft Sentinel and we're gonna click into our incident right here, attempts to sign in to disable the account. We'll go ahead and do view 
full details so we can see all the details and we'll just see all the information we're able to get out of this. We have this trying to show us the incident thing. We'll just, we're, we're going to yell at it ourselves. We don't need your help, Microsoft. We have try hack me, right? But right away, we have a few different things. So we'll, we'll go work through this together. We have, come, can you please stop? I don't need, I don't need your help. <laughs> we have the severity of medium, the status we have unassigned. We could assign that to ourselves because we are working the incident right now. So let's assign that to ourselves. We have the workspace name and a description. So it says it identifies failed attempts assigning to disable the accounts across multiple Azure apps. Default threshold for Azure applications attempted to sign into is three. We have some references right there and user account is disabled. The account has been disabled by an administrator. We have some evidence showing any events, alerts, bookmarks, last update time, and we have a couple of entities as well as the tactics and techniques from MITRE, specifically the valid accounts uh, technique for initial access. We also have some entities over here. We have a user account and we have an IP. If we click into the IP, it's going to try to help us again, but we can see some good information here. And let me move my face so I'm not blocking this. I'll move myself up here. But look at this information. I don't know if I zoom out, if it's a little bit easier to see. Yeah, if I zoom out, it's a little bit better. I apologize if it's small, but we can see the organization. We can see that it's coming from Miami, Florida. We can see the data source coming from security alerts, the first scene and the last scene. And you know what? That actually answers, I believe, our first question. So I'm going to copy that and jump back over to try hack me. And it says, what is the IP address involved in this incident? Let's go ahead and drop that there. And it says, what is the city? Well, if my terminal would stop popping up instead of try hack me, we can see the city is Miami. So someone in Miami or someone is using a proxy for Miami is trying to log in into some disabled accounts. And now it's asking us what exactly is the disabled account? Well, if we click into this right here, we have Marcus at try hack me labs .microsoft .com. If we go into the timeline, see if it works for me. We can see the timeline of when it was done. And we have a couple of things here. I click view full details here. We can see a little more information about what is going on. It should pop up insights in a moment, showing things that we could dig down into more if we wanted to really do a full investigation. But for this question, it's just asking what account is trying to be signed into. So let's grab that information and paste that in there. See if that's correct. And it is, and it says result type filter in rule. Well, let's jump back out to this, and I don't wanna to get too ahead of myself. I wanna show you all the other things that we can look at here. If we click onto the filter itself, we can see a little more information here, but the cool thing is on this li events link, we can actually link to log analytics. So what we're seeing here is kind of an overall overview of the incident, but if we link to log analytics, we can actually see the full logs and why it's triggering on this. So if we jump over to this, it's gonna set up a custom query for us. And we can see it right here. We can expand this and we can see a little more information. We have the user principal name. We have the IP address. We have the type. These are the custom logs it's pulling for, the custom log table rather it's pulling from. The application set, so we know it's an Azure portal. So a threat actor or someone was trying to log in as Marcus on the main Azure login portal. We can see the name, the UPN suffix, and we can dig some stuff into here as well if we want to look up more logs. But that's just one helpful trick to know that, hey, if you want to pull up the actual logs, you don't have to come up with a custom query to dive into it. We can pull it up and dive directly into the logs. I'm going to close this out right here. And that gives us a high level overview. We have incidents or entities again, but we already had that information. What is our final question that we have? Result type filter in rule. We can get that information by jumping back over to Microsoft Sentinel, but we're going to jump back down to analytics where the analytic rules are set up. And once analytics loads eventually, thank you, Microsoft, we can grab the rule that we're digging into, which is the attempts to sign and disable the accounts, and we can right click edit on that rule. And we can go over to set the rule logic to see how it's being set. And then we're able to get the event type filter or the result type right here, 50057. Copy that. Whichever one I was on, I don't know why I closed it out. Wait, what? 
Here, there we go. I had it open twice, and there we go. It took me just a bit, but we successfully investigated one of these incidents. Attempts to sign in to disable the accounts. But that gives you a really quick overview of the defending Azure path and for you to figure out whether or not the path is right for you. What I would say is if you're on the blue team or you work in a SOC and you work with Microsoft products, this is definitely something worth investigating. But maybe one suggestion to save some of the money personally is reach out to your employer. Tell them, hey, on Try Hack Me, there is an incredible path all about defending Microsoft Azure. And we can set up a business license, we can have a few seats, and we can take our entire team through this so we can skill up ourselves for knowing how to defend against Azure for attackers. That is honestly what I would recommend. If you're able to do it that way, then this path is definitely worth it. Or if you work in a SOC with Azure products, this is also worth it. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think this path is worth the price or have you gone through the path? And if you have, what are some of the strengths and weaknesses from your perspective? I would love to hear from you. Believe it or not, I do read all the comments on my video. So let me know what you think and I'll talk to you over in the comment section.